crawl up in here. That's it. I'm gonna do this real quick. Hopefully I don't end up on the floor. If you run into this situation and you really want to load up this end cabinet with a lot of China. Welcome back everybody. It's another day working on the kitchen renovation. Doing upper cabinets today. I'm going to show you how I do it. A lot of people have been asking about these shirts and these hats. What's the deal with the, all the caulk guns everywhere? Go to the handyman.store. You can get yourself a caulk gun hat, caulk gun t-shirt. You can even get a caulk gun sweatshirt. That link will be down in the description. All right. So why am I doing the upper cabinets after the lower cabinets? The answer is customer service. As you can see, this house is lived in. And I know there's a lot of broke bubbas that have been commenting. Yeah, I'm gonna tell them to pack this. Whoa, whoa, easy, handyman. There are two versions of this video, this section of the project. There's this video, it's about 25 minutes long. And then there is the Patreon only video. It is over 55 minutes long. I'd suggest you watch this video. If you got some questions about why I did this or why I did that, the Patreon video will answer all of them. The extra 20 minutes is about seven to ten minutes business talk and another ten minutes that is broken up throughout the entire video of just technical information uh, about how the house was built, how the old cabinets were installed, why they were done that way, my measuring techniques. That link will be in the top of the description. Now back to the safe space. These cabinets are pretty light. Hold these up here with your hand and zip them in. Um, the new cabinets are a little bit heavier duty. They're medium grade. These are light duty, new cabinets, medium duty. And I've got a special tool to help me get these upper cabinets in place. So how are these cabinets installed? Gold deck screws, just like they are today. I'm going to do a slight modification to these gold deck screws, but you can still even still see, and you can't really see, the marks on the cabinets where the original installer in 1993 made lines for where the studs are. The one thing I'm gonna do that you might not do if you're much younger is I'm taking all the shelves out and I'm taking the doors off. All this stuff has to get collapsed down, broken down, put in the back of my truck, and taken to the dump. It's gonna have to happen anyways. I'm trying to make things easier on my lower back. It's went to Snap City several times in the last few days. So this is the largest cabinet in the kitchen and it's held to the wall with just four two and, a, two and a half inch deck screws. These aren't even full three inchers. They are a fine thread. Looks like this one, there were no studs behind there. They got it angled sharply back that way towards that cabinet. See how those screws are still attached. Just pulled right out of the drywall. Now, there's some interesting things I'm seeing under here. There's a whole bunch of deck screws in the bottom of this going down. I'm not sure what that reason is for that. Hopefully they didn't screw into this with a whole bunch of deck screws. Well, this one was actually done right. You rarely ever see that. Maybe get a screwdriver on it and make sure it actually hit a stud 
and isn't just sunk into drywall. This cabinet does have four screws in it, but they are maybe only 10 inches separated. This one down here isn't sunk in, so we'll see if all 10, or all 10, we'll see if all four actually go into the studs. No, see I just got this spinning. So that one missed. That one missed. Jeez. I just wanted to clarify something. It seems like I might be negatively talking about this cabinet installation. That's not my intention. My intention is to show you the real world. There's a lot of fake stuff out there on YouTube and social media. It's just somewhat aggravating to someone who does this for a living and knows that these people are blatantly lying through their teeth that, and, and what they're lying about is methods, materials, when you're doing it for business. If you're an old man and you're whittling birdhouses in your workshop, you can do it as slow and as methodical as you want. But out here in the real world, when you're building houses and remodeling houses, there are certain methods that make money. That's the only reason we're here. So you gotta get it, the work done. You gotta get it done efficiently. You gotta turn a good profit because you'll be a broken man by the time you're 50 if you try to do manual labor your entire life. Just keep that in mind that uh, there's a lot of fake stuff out there on YouTube and I'm trying to show how things come apart and go together in the real world, not fake social media. So if you see all these lines, all these screw holes here, this is guys trying to find the studs of where they just say, okay, Looks like it should be there. We'll drill a hole in the drywall. It's empty. It's empty. It's empty. It's empty. Or I made a hit. May a hit. Let's go over a little bit and find the edge. So you can see that there are literally screw holes all over this wall, just in an attempt to find the studs. There's just definitely a stud there. They did figure that out. They just decided uh, just to go with it. And that is the real world. Just go with it. Leave those screws in there. They didn't hit a stud. We're not pulling them out and leaving a hole in the back of the cabinet. You just leave the screw in there and move on. Woo! Here's my secret weapon. This is the air sled lift cart. You may have seen a previous video where I used this to install or uninstall and reinstall a double oven. Here is the corner upper cabinet, Lazy Susan. Take note of the bracing at the top and the bottom. Those are the only places that you can put screws in this. That's not gonna hold anything. That's not even wood. That's like, well, there might be some sort of wood in there. Up we go. Hurry! Can it be that easy that I just take measurements and zip, zip, zip it in? I need to screw right in there in the back 12 in I think it's three quarter inches over and then this one is 16 and three no 12 and a half and 16 off the wall well that's right behind this this spinny thing here you guys see that plug right there so anyways they got a plug in here you got to pop it up with a knife and that will give you access to the screws that screw this to the cabinet and the only way to install this cabinet is to remove this because it's the only way to get access to that strip of structural backing that is around the bottom of the cabinet. Should come out now. 
So I am pre-drilling to get through this, the drywall, and you know, make sure 100% that I'm hitting the stud. And these are three inch deck screws. So this is just one part of the formula here. Now that's one plane. This here is another plane. I can't even see over there, but looks good. Dang, I mean, that's pretty, pretty darn close. I could probably shim this one just here. Once in a while, you're gonna miss a stud, and it just sucks. There are these little stickers that are the same material, same color as this fake wood on the inside of most cabinets. And you just take that little sticker, you make sure the grains go up and down just like this, and you pop it right on there. They come in, they come on a little piece of paper backing, and they're circles, and you just stick it right over there. Just The idea is to not make mistakes. Before this cabinet was up, I verified screw holes. I measured off of this wall, took a note of the measurement, wrote it down. So this new camera I got doesn't do close-up focus. you got to do the whole hand thing. This is the deck screw. And this is the cabinet washer. Um, you'll see these in a lot of yours. If you have a builder grade cabinet, you probably won't see this little fancy washer on here. This lift cart made things just too easy not to keep using it. I wanted to point something out to you. There's a scratch right here on the side of the cabinet. I did not put that there, someone else did, and someone else already tried to touch it up. Um, it's not gonna affect this install because the microwave is going up against it. But if, if it was on an end side, like the cabinet that goes over here, this cabinet would have to be rejected. There's no way you can install this, uh, a, there's no way you can install a cabinet with an exposed end with that scratch. So these screws are not set home yet. They're snug, barely, barely snug actually. But this is where the shimming comes in. So I know that I gotta shim the bottom out to get these corners to meet up perfectly. Now the top one, I don't think needs a shim. I'm just gonna send that home. Be always feeling and watching. You don't want any, any blowouts, both sides. One more. Boom. It sounds like I'm yelling because I'm not sure how well the microphone on this new camera works. I'm not doing the whole microphone on me. This is so easy with this. Oh, 
I'm going to finish screwing the face frames together and then sync the rest of them. Once again, I'm going to use this uh, lift cart. I'm going to give you guys a close-up. It's not a big deal or anything, but you can see how this cabinet is different size than this one. It's completely different made, too. Look at that. Three-quarter inch plywood on the right and MDF on the left. The reason this is three-quarter inch plywood is because this end is a real veneer wood. It's not uh, like this stuff here. This is real wood. You see that? three-quarter inch plywood there still particle board on the back so what I'm gonna have to do and you can see they're both tight to the back wall there they come straight out and we've got an eighth of an inch just shim that out everything will be fine if you're curious how the heck this cabinets up here I've got all the screws almost all the way in and what this is going to allow me to do is jam a shim underneath here and this will slide out. So I'll do it shims on the top and the bottom and then do the face frames, screw those together and then sink these home. I'm shim everything out. If I shim this way out like this, it's going to break this seam up. So this side's got to come out too. You got one shim almost fully in place or sunk in up top. Same thing. 
and this is the seam that is as tight as it can get there's no lip on either side you're gonna have a line no matter what because there's two different pieces of wood but that's as tight as it can get right there There could be a notch plate there. That's something you don't want to mess with. There is a stud here and an outlet. Do these go up, over, and down? A, a notch plate is a metal plate that gets hammered over a stud where there's a hole with electrical or plumbing going through it. Yeah, there's definitely a notch plate there. Pretty dang strong cabinet. Crawl up in here. That's it. I'm gonna do this real quick. Hopefully I don't end up on the floor. One foot up, two feet up, 200 pounds. We're calling her good. These, these clamps up here, can you see me up here? <laughs> these clamps just make this a perfect transition. I think there's quite a few of these style clamps out on the market. These ones are uh, BZ, B-E-S-S-E-Y. I think I may have called them something different uh, earlier in the video or when I was doing the bottom cabinets. You're probably wondering, what the heck's he going to do with that other cabinet? Is he going to put it in? Remember, there are no studs behind there. And you can hold a decent amount of weight by screwing it to another cabinet. Especially since those screws are right there. I'm going to make things difficult on myself and put some anchors into this drywall. If you run into this situation and you really want to load up this end cabinet with a lot of china. There's definitely going to be two versions of this video. One for the common man and lady, and then the other is going on Patreon. Okay, there are no test runs. It either works or it doesn't work. Rich. Flexi Lexi. one so don't mess it up go slow
Things are just about done around these parts. I gotta hook up plumbing once the countertop goes in. I gotta do toe kick, scribe, crown molding, and adjust the doors. That's kind of the last phase of a cabinet install. What do you think it costs? Subcontractor pricing 10 years ago was $150 per cabinet. So let's count them. One, two, three, four, five. We're gonna count both panels. Six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13. You do the math. Take a guess at what I charge or what it worked out to be per cabinet install. This cabinet here would have been double if not triple. Sometimes large pantries were counted as double cabinets. Don't forget there is an unedited version of this video that is on that's on my Patreon channel. Don't go over there wearing your sissy little loafers and your lotiony hands. Goodbye!